In this lecture, we are going to learn about custom configuration file and we will understand why we might want to create a custom configuration file and use it in our NestJS application. So in NestJS, a custom configuration file allows you to define and manage application settings beyond simple environment variables. It is a way to organize complex configurations into structured data, making them more manageable and maintainable. Now, a custom configuration file is typically a TypeScript or JavaScript file that exports a function or an object containing your application's configuration settings. And you can use it to define configurations that are more complex than simple key value pairs, such as nested objects, arrays, or functions. And these configurations can be loaded and accessed using the at nestjs slash config module. So let's understand this practically. Let's go to VS Code. And here, first of all, in the source folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it as config. And inside this config folder, we are going to keep all our custom configuration files. Inside this config folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new file. And I'm going to call it as app.config.ts. You can name this file anything, but it should be a TypeScript file. Inside this file, what we are going to do is we are going to create and export a function. And I'm going to call this function as app config. Okay. And here I'm using the arrow function syntax in order to create this function and export it. So we are exporting this app config function from this app config.ts file. Now from this function, we want to return an object. And here we have this error because here we need to create a variable. So I'll call it as const. So instead of default, it should be export. And then we are creating a variable using this const keyword. We are calling it as app config and we are assigning it with a function. And from this function, we want to return an object. In that object, I want to have two properties environment, which is going to be an object and database. You can name these properties anything. And this is also going to be an object. Now inside this database object, I'm going to create some properties like host. And I want to assign this property with the DB host environment variable value. Now inside this file, we do not have access to config service. So here again, what we are going to do is we are going to use process.env dot and then the name of the environment variable here is db host. Now here we will be able to read the value of this db host environment variable on this process.env object because this config module, it will take care of loading all the environment variables from the .env file or from any one of these environment variable files based on which environment we are using. And it will attach those environment variables to this process.env. And that's why we should be able to access those environment variables on this process.env. Now, the advantage of using this custom configuration file is here, we can also specify some default values. So if this environment variable value is, let's say, null or undefined, in that case, we can set a default value. For example, here I can set the default value as localhost. Okay, in the same way, let's create another property called port. And to this, I want to assign the value stored in db underscore port environment variable. And if we do not have a valid value here, in that case, let's set the default value to 5432. And again, this db port, it is going to return us the port number. Basically, it is going to return us this value, but this value will be returned as a string value. So we can also convert it to number type using parse int. Okay. Then let's create another property called name. And here also, we are going to use process.env.db underscore name environment variable. Then let's create username property. And here we want to assign the value of db underscore username environment variable to this property. In the same way, let's create 
password property and to this we want to assign the value of db underscore password to this environment variable then let's also create another property called synchronize and to this synchronize property we are going to read the value of db underscore let's say sync okay and here we will check if this value is equal to this string true in that case we want to return boolean value true otherwise we want to return boolean value false and that we want to assign it to synchronize property now in this dot env we don't have any sync so let me copy this from here and here i'm going to create another environment variable db underscore sync and i'm going to assign it with the value true okay okay so this dot env file it will be loaded for production so in production sync should be false so here i'm going to set it to false let me copy this and let me also save this and we are going to add it for development also but in the development i'll set it to true okay and in the test there also i will set it to true or maybe here in test also let's set it to false okay so basically we are going to use this environment variable this db sync to assign this synchronized property so in the environment variable it will be a string value so we are checking in this app config.ts file we are checking if db sync if it is string true in that case we want to assign this synchronized property with this value true this boolean value true otherwise we want to assign it with the boolean value false in the same way let's also create another property auto load entities and here we are going to check for an environment variable let's call this environment variable auto underscore load okay and let's create this variable so in the env file let me create this auto load and since this dot env will be loaded for production environment here i'm going to set it to false and let's go to dot env dot development there i'm going to set it to true and in the test here i'm going to set it to false okay let's go back to app config.ts so here we will check if it is equal to string value true in that case we want to assign this auto load entities property with boolean value true otherwise we will assign it with boolean value false okay all right now for the environment i am going to set this environment property instead of assigning it with an object for the environment i only want one value so basically i want to assign this environment property with the value which is stored for node underscore env environment variable so here again i'll say process dot env dot node underscore env so whatever value we have for this node underscore env that we want to assign to this environment variable and this node underscore env it will be undefined for production when we will run our application in production so in that case if it is undefined let's set a default value and the default value we are going to set it to production all right with this let's save this file so this is our custom configuration file as you can see when we are using this custom configuration file we can set some default values we can do type conversion and in the custom configuration file we are also able to read the value of the environment variables using process.env now the advantage of using custom configuration file is when you have a lot of configuration settings for your application and you can also use custom configuration file when you want to segregate the configuration in different custom configuration files based on module or functionality all right so here we have created our custom configuration file now we want to use it in app module.ts file so here what we want to do is in this config module when we are importing it inside this import array we are going to specify another configuration and here 
we are going to use this load property and what do we want to load here we want to load a custom configuration file by this config module and the name of that custom configuration file is app config and to use this app config we need to import it from this file path okay with this let's save the changes and now what we are going to do is to this get method instead of specifying the environment variables now we are going to specify the properties from this file so this function here it is going to return us an object in that object we have this database property so here we can say database dot host and we need to pass it as a string value okay let's copy this and here let's say database dot port then here we are going to use database dot username here we are going to use database dot password and here we are going to use database dot name okay and for auto synchronize entities also let me copy this line and let me paste it here so for auto load entities we have this auto load entities property we are going to make use of that so you will say database dot auto load entities and then let me copy this one more time and let's paste it here and we are going to read the value for this synchronize from this property from this synchronize property so let me specify that property here and let's save the changes and with these changes let's go to terminal here i do not see any errors what i'll do is i'll stop the process first and now let me go and let me restart the process i'm running the application in development mode so the application is compiling it is compiling in watch mode and application has been compiled successfully we do not have any error just to check if the application is working as expected and the database connection is there let's go to postman and let me make this request you will see that we are still getting the response from the database from our nestjs application so our application is working as expected now what we are doing in our application is we are using the configuration from this custom configuration file from this app config this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day